Aloha! Today on PureEpoxy-Hawaii.com, we're going to be sanding, vacuuming, and rolling out epoxy, and much more. We're going to be working in a three-car garage with a storage closet, and we're going to put down solid gray epoxy. As with every epoxy job, there are three parts. Part one is preparation, part two is application, and part three is finishing. For the preparation stage, you're gonna need floor grinder, a hand grinder, a diamond grinding wheels, orbital sanders, 100 grit sandpaper, concrete vacuum, shop vac with HEPA filter, mop and bucket, crack filler, and masking tape. So here's our three car garage project. There are no doors on the garage, so that means we're gonna have to build a dust barrier. Um, here's the closet. And we're gonna make sure we're gonna have to exit, not out that left door where all the dust is coming in, we're gonna exit through this door. We're gonna seal off the other door. And we're gonna put a big plastic barrier where this garage door should be to prevent dust from getting on the epoxy after we lay it down and let it dry for a, a day. The first thing we're going to do is diamond wheel grind. And we've got a floor grinder and a hand grinder and the objective is to remove the cream, the top layer of concrete. Now the floor grinder will take care of about 95 percent of the um, of the grinding just can't get it near the walls that's why we have a hand grinder and here he is grinding the leading edge of where the concrete is going to stop or where I'm sorry where the epoxy is going to stop and here we are vacuuming all the dust up obviously you want to get that out of there but it also reveals where we missed any spots where we missed grinding because this garage doesn't have any doors we're using a dust blower to blow all these outer dust that we got from grinding right outside the perimeter we're blowing all that dust away before we put up the barrier We also use a HEPA filter with the vacuum system to vacuum up the remaining dust before we lay down any epoxy. Crack filling. Before any epoxy gets rolled out, all the cracks in the concrete have to be filled. Right here, he's widening the cracks, which seems counterintuitive, but we've got to widen open the cracks so that we can see uh, where we're going to put in the crack filler so we get enough room to put in the crack filler. Now the reason why we have to fill in the, all the cracks is because the epoxy is so viscous, so liquidy that if we don't do this the epoxy will just gravity feed into those cracks and won't stop until it finds you know the end of it and that means that you're going to be losing epoxy off the surface and so by filling the cracks we ensure that all the epoxy stays on the surface once we roll it out and of course every time we grind any of the concrete we've got to blow all the dust out so that's what he's doing with the dust blower And here he's just wiping up the remaining dust with a uh, rag and plain water.
The next thing we do is fill the cracks that we just widened open with sand. He fills the cracks with sand and then he's going to spread it out using a trowel. After filling everything with all the cracks with sand, it's time to mix the crack filler. And it's a one to one ratio of part A to part B. You'll notice that he's mixing only a small batch at a time. Actually, he's only mixing eight ounces total. And that's because the crack filler sets up very fast within about a minute and a half to two minutes. So he's not going to mix it much, and he's going to start to pour it out as fast as he can, and as carefully as, as, as he can. The purpose of the sand in the crack is, for, is to give the crack filler liquid something to grab onto as it goes into the, into the crack and starts to expand. After applying the crack filler, we've got to go back and grind down all the high spots in those cracks. What happens with the crack filler is that it expands and so and creates high spots on the floor. So we've got to go back and grind them down flat. And of course, because we did the spot grinding, we've got to go back and vacuum up all that dust. So we've got more vacuuming to do. And the final preparation step is to mop up the remaining dust with a just plain water, doing a dry mop. You can see how fast the uh, water is absorbing into the concrete because we've removed the top layer, which protects it. Now we're going to protect it with epoxy. Right here he's cleaning the leading edge of where the epoxy is going to stop. We want to make sure that this edge is very clean and we get all the cream of the uh, concrete off. Right there he's chipping off the cream. That top layer that protects the concrete but now we're going to replace we're replacing this top layer with epoxy which will last a lot longer so if we don't do this and the leading edge is dirty like that that's where you start to get epoxy chipping up when you use those cheaper products you got to get all of that stuff out of there vacuum it up all the dust all the little particles it's got to go We lay down masking tape around the perimeter, basically anywhere we don't want the epoxy to get on. We do this for the leading edge and then we also do it around the entire perimeter of all the walls and on all over the floor. Right here he's doing a quick creek crack filling and that's for all the little spots that we missed that vacuuming and dry mopping have revealed any little spots, dents, cracks are now being filled and it's got to be done or you, it'll show right through the epoxy if you don't do it. And here's our dust barrier because there's no garage doors. We built a dust barrier out of uh, sheets of plastic and these extension poles. It worked pretty good. Kept a lot of the dust out as you can see it's kind of windy. Taping the perimeter for verticals. Verticals are anything that go up and down that we're going to put epoxy on. Right there, that, that step into the closet, that's a vertical. And then the footing all along, all along the walls of the house, the footing we have to, those are verticals. So we put the tape above it so we don't get it on the, on the wall and at the bottom so we can we make a barrier. 
Part two, we're going to be doing application. For the application, the tools you're going to need are six PE100 solid grade kits, a nine inch and an 18 inch rollers, roller frames and poles, chip brushes, mixing paddle, a drill, Midwest slip-on spike shoes, five quart and five gallon buckets, orbital sanders at 220 grit, denatured alcohol, and dust mops. All right, mixing epoxy time. <clears throat> we're gonna start with the closet, so we're gonna do small batches and not make a whole entire kit at once because the closet doesn't require an entire kit. He's already got two parts of part A in the bucket, in the mixing bucket. Now he's adding one part B. So he's got two part A and one part B in the mixing bucket. And now he's going to place it on a stable surface right before we're going to mix it. You've got to mix part A and part B for at least a minute and a half. So we're going to start the timer right now. As he mixes, he's going around the sides, getting all the product mixed, all that's stuck on the sides, and you've really got to scrape the bottom really good. You just got to be careful that you don't bust through the container and make a mess. Scrape all the sides and the bottom. Pouring the epoxy and cutting it in. Right here he's just taking the bucket and pouring it directly on the floor. And then we're going to use chip brushes and to um, basically cut in. And like he's doing right there, using a chip brush. Just brushing it right up against the wall. And that tape, masking tape, is help, helping um, mask it so that it doesn't get where we don't want it. Hitting the verticals, what I mean by that is basically using the chip brush to paint on the epoxy. And why this is an important point is because the epoxy is really viscous. It's really liquidy, so once it gets on the vertical, it wants to just gravity feed to the floor. So you want to get most of the product at the top so that it just, see as it's dripping? You just want it to get out the top so that it continuously goes over the edge and keeps it opaque instead of thinning out and gravity feeding to the floor. And now it's time to roll out the epoxy. He's using a 9 inch roller. Usually we use an 18 inch roller for the bigger areas and a 9 inch roller for the perimeters. And any spots that we can't get you use a chip brush. As you go, you want to be mindful of things that have debris that's falling into the epoxy. The time to get it out is now. Although this is the first coat, we are going to come back and sand it and get any high spots out of it or any debris that has fallen in after we leave and let it dry for a day. So either way, it's gonna it'll be all right. So you mixed an entire bucket and just. You just pour it right out onto the concrete and get to work. So he's got the 18 inch roller for the main part, for the main room, and we're using the 9 inch roller also, but usually we use the 9 inch roller, it has more control around the perimeter. Here's the 18 inch roller, here's the 9 inch roller around the perimeter. 
and there he is on his knees using the chip brush to cut in close to the edge where the tape is on that leading edge. You don't want to paint yourself into a corner either. You want to be mindful of where you are and where your other guys are painting. There he is again using the chip brush to cut in. You don't want to get too close with the roller and make a mistake and go onto the concrete that we don't want epoxy on because that'll be, we'd have to stop everything to wipe that up. Cutting in with the chip brush, making sure it doesn't get any on the other concrete. Now we're pulling all the tape off the bottom layer, leaving the tape that's on the wall until the end. So. pulling all the perimeter tape off off the floor and here's another bucket of epoxy This is the third bucket of epoxy for the three car garage for the first layer. And here he's using a nine inch roller close to the tape edge, that leading edge. It gives you a lot more control using a nine inch roller versus a 18 inch roller. As we get more and more of the room filled with epoxy, spike shoes now come into fashion. Spike shoes allow you to walk around on the epoxy without picking it up. If you were to try this walking around with shoes on, you'd just get epoxy all over the bottom of your shoes. Whereas the spike shoes, you really don't get any on your shoes, on the shoes, and it doesn't leave any footprints behind. Looks like we're painting ourselves into a corner, but that's why we picked this door to exit out of as we finish the room. First layer of epoxy is dry, and look at it. It's, it looks like glass. It's beautiful, except for these blemishes. They happen from time to time. It's only the first layer, so we're gonna be grinding the first layer so that the second layer sticks to it, and all of this will go away. Little things happen like this, little blemishes. It'll have to get sanded and refilled with crack filler and then um, resanded again. And then we'll, the second coat of epoxy will go right over that. And now we're sanding the first layer of dried epoxy with 220 grit sandpaper. You have to sand the entire floor. This is provides a scratch coat for the second layer of epoxy to stick to. And now he's mopping up the dust with a wet mop and bucket. Just plain water. And now it's time for mixing the epoxy for layer number two. We've got part A, the PE100 solid gray. Pouring it into a five gallon mixing bucket. And now he's scraping bucket A into the mixing bucket, getting all that part A out of there. Now he's putting in another part A, so it's a two to one ratio, two A's to one B. Scraping that bucket. And now he's gonna mix 
part A by itself, pre-mixing it. He's going to mix part A for probably about a minute and a half. And then he's just pre-mixing part B. Again, it's a two to one ratio. Two part A to one part B. Now he's going to put part B into part A, and then we're going to scrape out part B into into the mixing bucket, getting all that hardener in into the into the mix. And now he's going to mix it for about a minute and a half. Now remember, you've got to get in there and scrape the sides of the bucket and the bottom of the bucket with the mixing paddle. Just get right in there and scrape it as you're mixing. Don't scrape it too hard or you'll obviously break the bucket or the paddle. Pouring epoxy layer number two, it's very similar to pouring epoxy layer number one. We're going to do the verticals first. We're going to lay out some product on the floor to get it going and then we're going to start on the verticals. Instead of a chip brush, here he's using a weenie roller. You can do it either way, doesn't matter, as long as it gets the product on the vertical and gets it on there to stay. So just like before, you're going to go around the entire room, around the perimeter with a 9 inch roller there and doing verticals with the weenie roller or a chip brush and you're just going to keep going all the way around the room around the perimeter with a nine inch roller spreading it out evenly there he's got the 18 inch roller he just put down rolling out with a nine inch roller right there and here he goes again with the verticals And there he is with the 18 inch roller spreading it out across the main part of the entire room. You're going to be doing 90% of the room with the 18 inch roller. And here we're spreading out the product evenly across the floor making sure that it's all covering evenly. And this is what the second layer of epoxy looks like dried looks like a mirror just like the first layer and just like the first layer they're sanding the second layer this is so that the urethane finish coat will stick to that to the second layer sweeping vacuuming and mopping just like the first layer we've got to sweep it all all that dust epoxy dust up and mop it up and vacuum it up then we mop with denatured alcohol on a dust mop or a dust rag and this brings us to finishing part three in finishing, you're going to need one urethane top coat kit, a 9 and 18 inch rollers, roller frames and poles, chip brushes, mixing paddle, drill, and spike shoes. We're going to finish the floor with a urethane top coat. We're mixing the urethane 5 to 1, 5 parts A to 1 part B. We're going to mix the urethane just like we mixed the epoxy for a minute and a half. And now it's time to roll out the urethane layer. We call that the finish coat. We actually put it in a pan. We don't just 
roll, roll it on the floor just like the epoxy. We put it in an 18 inch pan and we're going to use chip brushes to uh, do the verticals and a uh, weenie roller. And then later on they're going to use an eight, eight, right there the 18 inch roller for the main floor. So right now, just like with the epoxy, they're doing the verticals. So after all the verticals are done, now it's time for the main floor with the 18 inch roller and spike shoes. So in conclusion, our three car garage with closet, we used six PE 100 solid gray kits, one urethane clear top coat kit, crack filler, spike shoes, a nine and 18 inch rollers, chip brushes, and an 18 inch roller frame. All of these you can find in our store, which I'll show you in a minute. And we also used a floor sander with diamond blades, hand sander with diamond wheel, orbital sanders with 100 and 220 grit sandpaper, masking tape, denatured alcohol, brooms, mops, and vacuums. Aloha and thank you for visiting pureepoxy-hawaii.com. We specialize in commercial, industrial, residential, and institutional projects. Today I want to talk to you about the products we used on our project. If you go to the store, you can pick and choose any of the products in our store. Products that we used in our project, we used PE100 solid grade in a three gallon kit. We used three of those. We also used urethane clear top coat in a three gallon kit we used one of those for the three car garage. You'll also need at least three 18 inch rollers, one for each stage of the project. And that goes also for the nine inch rollers, you'll need three of those. And the chip brushes, you'll need three of those too. You'll need at least three mix and measure five quart containers, one for each stage of the project and you'll need at least one 18 inch roller and one 9 inch roller and you'll definitely need some spike shoes you'll also need crack filler if you've learned anything please leave us a comment below and also please subscribe aloha